Hi, this is Hannah Frost, and in this screencast, I'll be demonstrating the Stanford Digital Repository self-deposit application. I begin by typing in the URL in my browser window, sdr.stanford.edu, and it takes me to the home page. Here I can click Sign in via WebAuth to be logged in. In this screencast, I'll be demonstrating a collection that already exists, a collection that's used for gathering publications and research by Stanford University Library staff. Now that I'm logged in, I have my dashboard displayed, and here is the link to that collection. Go ahead and click the link, and it takes me to the View Collection screen. Uh, to best explain the metadata and settings that are already associated with this open collection, I'm going to go to the the Edit Collection screen. It's just a good way of, of seeing the options. All right, here we are in the Edit Collection screen. And here you can see there are required and optional metadata fields. Uh, we have the opportunity to add a collection name, description, and an email associated with um, the management of the collection. Optionally, I can link to other websites uh, that may be related to this particular collection. In this case, we don't have those. In the center part of the form, we start getting into the, the release, visibility, and license options for the content. Release refers to the ability to uh, delay the release of content, in other words, apply an embargo. In this case, we've set it up so that a item depositor has the option to select an embargo up to three years after the time of deposit, um, but there are no other settings. It's just variable at the item level. Similarly, with respect to visibility, the depositor, um, in this case, has the option to restrict visibility to the Stanford community. They can do that at the item level, but the default will be public. And in the Terms of Use and License section, we have the option to apply a default li uh, license, such as a Creative Commons or Open Data license. Um, we can make a license required, or we can say no license at all. In this case, again, we're allowing it to vary at the, at the item level. In the lower portion of the screen, this is where a collection manager can uh, invite other Stanford community members to participate in a collection. In this case, we have several collection managers, a number of depositors. We also have the optional review workflow. If I were to turn this on, it would be possible to invite reviewers um, in addition to the managers who can verify an item submission before it's finally published into this collection. But we're going to turn that off in this case. So I have, that walks us through all of the settings already established for this collection. I will now go to the item screen and see the item, the other items that already exist in this collection. There are two, two items, but I'm going to go ahead and add a third. I go over here to the action panel and I add a new item and in this case I'm adding an article but there's a number of other uh, types of items that I could add. I'll go ahead and select item and it will take me to the item screen. It takes a minute to set up. Here we are. So I am going to be depositing an article that was recently published by my colleague, Richard Anderson. The title of the item is the Moab Design for Digital Object Versioning. And his email is rnanders at Stanford. He is the sole author of this particular article, so I'm going to go ahead and enter his name, last name, oops, followed by first name, and he is indeed the author, but there are other 
possibilities or the kinds of contributors that could be associated with a particular item. But the default is author and I will leave it as such. I do have the option to add other contributors, but we don't, we don't need that in this case. Uh, now we enter a date for when the contents of the item were created. This item, I happen to know, was published on July 15th. Go ahead and enter that date in this format. Now I have the ability to upload files. There's two ways to upload files. You can drag and drop, which I will do by opening up my Finder window. Where are the files? I'll start by first one in and there's my progress bar and now I'm going to label it the article article in word format PDF up. Followed by the zip file containing figures. PDF of article derived from Word file and zip file containing images published in the article. I do have the option to hide specific files associated with an item. These might be, this might be useful for files that shouldn't be published and made accessible or just not are, aren't appropriate to publish and make accessible to end users, but it are entirely appropriate to deposit and preserve um, uh, along with the item. But I won't be checking any of these as I want these to be made available. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and continue filling out the form. In this area, we have a place to put in an abstract, and I have one in this file here that I'm just going to cut and paste into the form and some keywords. I need at least one. I'm going to actually add several digital preservation, digital object versioning, and repository storage. In the next section, we can address citations associated with this material. The preferred citation for this item, I'm going to use this, this nifty little link which kind of pre-populates it with the, given the metadata I've already entered. It's got Richard's name, the date, the title of the article, and its location in the Stanford Digital Repository. This is the preferred citation for this particular item. But this article happened to be published elsewhere as part of a scholarly journal and using the related published work field, this is the appropriate place to link to that. And I happen to have that prepared here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that into this field. I could add more if I wanted. In this case, I don't have any more links to add. Related content. This is where you can add links to anything else online. It may not be directly related to this published work, like a like an article, but um, maybe contents that are also useful to point users to. And then I do in fact have a link that I would like to publish with this. This is the link to the code repository. Let me copy this link it in here and I will put the Moab versioning code on GitHub. That will be 
be the title for that particular link. Now, down to the item level settings for release and visibility. The, as we saw, the default was that this will be released for discovery and download immediately. I have the option to add an embargo. If I were to click on this, I could do so, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as immediately available. After it's released, the item can be downloaded and discovered by everyone, though I do have the option to limit it to Stanford only. But I want everyone to see this. And I just have to indicate here that I have reviewed this and it is the settings that I want for my particular deposit. Uh, the terms of deposit, it's important that these are reviewed by depositors and you can view them by clicking this link. It outlines all of the the, the rights both retained by the depositor as well as those rights that are transferred to Stanford Digital Repository so that it can do its job of preserving and providing access to the content. So I agree to these terms and go ahead and click that. And finally, I can review the licenses. Uh, this is the default license associated with the collection, but I want to actually change the default to CC BY, which is the solely the attribution license. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The reason I'm doing this is it happened to be the license under which the article was published uh, with the journal, as indicated here. So I want to be consistent and also publish it in the SDR under the same license. So now I've completed filling out the form and I'm going to go ahead and save. We'll keep our eyes on the status panel here and make sure that I've met all of the required steps. And as it's saving, it will, it will update that status. We're waiting for the files to upload and for the metadata to be written to the back end. Okay. So, my changes have been saved. I can review all of the things that I entered. My, my files, the date, everything seems to be in order. And if I go ahead and look here, I see that I've met all of the required steps. They're all checked off and the publish button is appearing. So that means I am ready. If I wanted, I could go ahead and retrieve the, 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 the link where this material will be available from online. I could even email that to myself. Well, actually, better yet, I'll email it to Richard. Great. And now I am going to go ahead and publish this item. And this is just a confirmation. I will go ahead and say yes. Now it takes about 30 minutes for all of the back end processing to complete before this URL actually a persistent URL, also known as a PERL, before that will actually be activated. So for now it just says it will be online and I'm guessing in about 30 minutes it will be published and available online. So we will come back and see that. So I checked back in just a few minutes later to see about the progress of depositing my item and sure enough the processing is complete. I see that the link where it is available online is active, so I'm going to click it, and it takes me straight to the persistent URL, the Perl, where this item will always be available online. I have all of the metadata that I entered, including the links, the files, and the license. It's all available. If I go back here, I want to point out that it's possible to open a new version of an item once it's been deposited and published. 
let's say there was an error in the metadata or I needed to change files or add a new file, you can do that by opening a new version. So that ends this particular screencast on the Stanford Digital Repository self-deposit system. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can go to sdr.stanford.edu and contact us by clicking Contact Us in the right-hand corner. Thank you.